Welcome to this easy seascape acrylic painting tutorial which is suitable for beginners and I really hope you're going to enjoy it. I include spattering and palette knife techniques with a very limited palette. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more like it, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. So shall we get started? These are the materials I'm going to be using and for a full list of these and the photo link, please see the description below. I'm using acrylic paper and I have taped some washi tape around the edge. I'm using a large flat synthetic brush with some cobalt blue and a touch of white and I'm just painting the sky area and the sea and I've actually diluted the acrylics on this first stage you can do you can almost paint them like watercolors it's fun to do and it's just to get an underpainting started and the beauty of acrylics is if it goes wrong you can just paint over the top I'm using a stay wet palette it stops the acrylics from drying out if you'd like to know how to make one I've, I've got a link in the description below which will explain fully how I made this stay wet palette I'm painting the rocks here, still using my large flat brush with a mixture of the red and the violet. So the colours I'm using are violet, I've got a warm blue and a cold blue, that's cobalt blue and primary blue. And I'm using yellow oxide, which is like yellow ochre and cadmium yellow and some red and white. And if you'd like alternative colours, I will have those in the description below. But I've kept it very, very simple, just really using primary colours and a violet just to make things really simple and also a learning experience for colour mixing. So as you can see there, I'm painting the sky using cobalt blue and white, just paling it towards the horizon. I've also added a little bit of red to warm the sky up here and there. And I've swapped now to my three quarter inch flat synthetic brush. I'm using my fingertips there, I've wet it just to blend the paint. Sometimes acrylics dry very quickly. You can use a retarder to slow this down. I tend to just use a little bit of water at the beginning stages. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using some white paint here just to create some cumulus clouds here um, on the left hand side just to create a bit of interest really and it's fun to do. So you can see here I'm steadily just building up these clouds you can wait for the painting to dry in between stages to build up and remember you can blend also with your fingertips to paint cumulus clouds which are great fun to do my painting is dried and I'm just using the primary blue which is like Prussian blue or cyan blue it's a cold blue and cold blues great make great sea colors so I'm using a bit of violet here because on this sort of side of the seawater here it's very very dark so I want to mix up as dark a colors as I can and violet with the blue really creates that really colorful dark I'm now painting some darks on the rocks as well I'm using the violet the primary blue and some red as well so you can get some really warm delicious darks by using these colors it's so much fun to paint so with acrylics we work dark to light so you're really looking out for all your dark colors here dark tonal values I'm painting on some light areas now on the rocks using the yellow oxide which I said earlier is like yellow ochre you could use raw sienna as well or even buff titanium if you have it there's lots of different alternatives but I'm just sort of chiseling these marks in I'm keeping the marks very loose I don't want to go into too much detail at present I want to keep everything sort of building I'm almost sculpting my seascape here I've allowed my painting to dry and I've mixed up a little bit of the blue a touch of the yellow oxide with some white just for that distant paler sea color my painting has dried again. I usually use a hairdryer as well, but you can let it dry naturally. And I'm just sculpting on now some of the yellow oxide with some white, really just getting those lighter colors on now, working dark to light, so putting on the lighter tones. So I'm sort of almost doing a dry brush in the foreground there to create the texture on the rocks. I'm just using some of the white now, titanium white with my fingertips and just blending in these fluffy cumulus clouds. Again, you can use slightly wet your fingertips if you find the paint's not blending enough for you. 
I'm actually painting some light now in the sea using still using this three quarter inch flat brush using a mixture of the cobalt blue and some white. You can also use the primary blue and I'm just picking out these light areas now working wet on dry. <laughs> actually put a little bit more dark on the rock sometimes when you're painting you tend well I do anyway I paint over the top of things you get carried away so I sort of look at things I sit down I assess them and think oh I've lost a little bit of my dark there so don't be afraid to go back in and go back to your darks again and just sort of address these things so I'm using a mixture of the violet and red there and I'm also using a little bit of the red and yellow with a touch of the violet just to have some sort of mid-tone colourful um, rocks there just to create a bit of interest as well so it's a little bit of artistic license but I'm sort of trying to see um, some colour here so I'm actually putting some warm yellow on the edge of the rocks here as well and a little bit in the sea I just want to keep sort of looking at the photograph looking at my painting just to have a look more now at the dark tones and the half tones and these shapes and colours and really try and create some interest in my painting. As you saw there, I've used some linear marks as well. Um, it's quite nice to lead your eye through. So those thin lines are really useful. I've swapped now to a plastic palette knife, but you can use a metal one as well. And I'm just applying the paint, almost like buttering toast really, and just getting little bits of violet and red and just sort of smoothing them and scraping them onto the surface of the painting there, really to create some texture. But I find sometimes using a palette knife, it makes you bolder and you sort of approach the painting in a different way so I really do encourage you to go out and get yourself a palette knife. I'm using a little bit of yellow and red now and just painting some of the warmer sort of light mid-tones on the top of the rocks there. Again printing with the side of the knife as well to get some nice linear lines. The painting has dried now and I'm painting in the lighthouse. It's kind of like the focal point. I left it, I wanted to get my sky painted first and then I can really approach this. Now if it does go wrong just wet your painting where your you know your lighthouse and then just wipe it off and start again I've drawn a very simple outline just using white paint I'm using a very small little brush here and just painting on the shadow areas first on the left hand side using a little bit of the cobalt blue touch of red touch of white and then just slightly getting lighter as it goes to the right hand side as because the light is coming from the right so I'm just painting this on just taking my time it's quite a fiddly sort of thing and so you don't want to rush it it's not like the rocks and the sea and the sky which is really loose now what I will say if you are an absolute beginner you might want to just leave this out you can have a go at it and if you don't like it you can paint the sky over the top so there's lots of ways around this so I've just added a little bit of yellow at the top there and some more shadow colour using the blue and the red. And I put a little bit more white on the right hand side just to really show that light. And I've done this after I've dried the painting again. So I'm just painting little highlights here, here and there. Um, again, I've dried my painting and I'm using the palette knife. I've dipped it into the white paint and I'm just printing now some of the white paint onto the surface of the water. I'm also sort of I'm sort of scuffing it so it looks like a wave. The little waves are hitting the rocks there as well. So you just pull it up a little bit. And again, if you don't like what you've done, just wet it with some water, wipe it off and have another go. And it's so much fun to do. You notice I turned my painting sideways, I found it easier. So the painting again has dried, all this drying is so important and I'm just using my liner brush now. You can use a rigger or a very small round brush. I'm just 
blocking in these little windows using the violet and the red. So that's the kind of darkest dark I can get. You can also add a little bit of the primary blue as well. Again, I've turned my painting sideways. I just find it easier to see things. Plus, it stops me from having a leaning lighthouse. Sometimes when I look straight on at something, I can't see that it's leaning. So I find when I turn it sideways, I can just see it better. So I'm just painting little details here using red and blue mixed together um, with my small brush and just painting on these final little darks and details, plus using some white to paint on those final highlights as well. <laughs> As you can see there, I'm just using my liner brush or rigger and just painting some sort of diagonal lines, wet on dry, onto the surface just to create some linear lines, to create a little story really, and to give more information and to show more detail. I'm finishing off now with a spatter. I like to do this, it stops me from overworking my painting, but also creates texture. So I've used some of the dark and now I'm actually diluting a little bit of titanium white and I'm gonna spatter that off to finish my painting. As you saw there, I also painted in some birds. Again, a little bit of artistic license. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it inspires you to have a go at painting these rocks, the sea, the, the sky, and maybe even the lighthouse. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, why not subscribe to my channel? Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.